Hi there, welcome back to the channel. This is a channel dedicated not only to my 2012 Jeep Rubicon, but to Jeeps in general. And today's video is absolutely epic. It's the most epic video I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not so epic. It actually kind of sucks. It's the first time that Ruby's ever thrown an error code uh, that I can recall. I mean, there might have been one from a, a gas cap not tightened down or something, but I, I think this is the first time it's, it's ever thrown an error code. So using my Bluetooth code reader, I just plug it into my ODBD2 BD8 R, R2D2. I just plug it into that port and open up the corresponding app on my phone and it tells me that it's a P0128 error which is one of two things or both it's either the coolant temperature sensor or the thermostat I'm just going to swap both out anytime you're replacing coolant make sure you get the correct coolant for your model year never ever mix coolant types it can gel and clog your heater core as well as your water pump Ruby is a 2012 and uses concentrate mixed with distilled water the tools required for this job are actually very minimal. The first thing you want to do is attach a small 3 8 inner diameter hose to the drain plug, which is located at the front of your Jeep. Rotate the plug 180 degrees counterclockwise with pliers. Be sure to collect as much of the fluid as you can. It's messy shit. Don't forget to remove the radiator cap. The rad won't drain with the cap still on. Also, don't expect the old fluid to gush out. Technically, you don't need to drain the whole system for this repair. I did because I was swapping out my four-year-old fluid. Once the system is drained, don't forget to close the plug. Most mechanics out there will tell you to remove the inner fender to access the sensor, but there was no way I was going to do that, as I would have to remove my Falcon 3.3 shocks to do that. I just put them on. Too much work for me. The sensor is located at the rear of the block and there is no access from the top and the connector absolutely sucks ass. You have to lift the red tab up first and then push down on the connector tab. It should then slide right off. At least that's the theory. Pull in, pull up, push sideways, twist, twerk. Finally got the asshole connector to come off. The new sensor already had a sealant applied, but if yours doesn't, do not use Teflon tape. Use an appropriate sealant like Loctite 567 or something similar. For some reason, it was easier putting the new sensor on than pulling the old one out. Even plugging in the asshole connector was a snap. Don't forget to push the red tab down to lock it in place though. While replacing the coolant sensor, I decided to also replace the thermostat, as well as both upper and lower hoses. Fewer items to worry about out on the trail. To access the thermostat, you'll have to remove the air intake. There is a sensor attached to the bottom of the intake. Unlike the coolant sensor, this one's super easy to unplug. If you're just doing the thermostat, you do not have to remove the hose completely. Again, I'm replacing both upper and lower hoses for peace of mind. The old thermostat should come off easily. Don't forget about the old gasket. Also, clean up the block to prevent future leaks. Do not use grinding tools of any kind on your aluminum block. I installed my new thermostat onto my new hose at my workbench. Make sure to put the hose all the way on. There are two protruding tabs that mark the end point. Slide the new thermostat into place and tighten up the bolts. Because the housing is plastic, be very careful not to over tighten. Hand tight is fine. Side 
Attach the hose and move the clamps into position with hose clamp pliers. Now it's time to do the initial fill of the rad with fresh coolant. There is an air bleed valve on the thermostat. Loosen it off until fluid trickles out and then retighten it. Then reinstall the air intake. Now it's time to burp the system. This is a very important step to ensure there are no air pockets in the cooling system. Air pockets will result in overheating. Park the vehicle at an incline so it's nose high and start the engine letting it idle for about 20 minutes. Be sure that the engine gets hot enough for the thermostat to open up several times. As fluid gets sucked into the system, be sure to fill up your funnel. Fill a reservoir up halfway between min and max. Reinstall the engine cover and the radiator cap. Then you're good to go for a quick road test. On my Jeep, the code dropped right away, but I'm told that this can take up to half an hour to clear. I did a quick scan for leaks. None were found. Now it's time to clean up this disaster on my garage floor. But first, let's do that road test. Like I mentioned earlier, my error code disappeared, but it can take up to half an hour of driving before the error code clears. Again, mine cleared right away. Um, so don't, don't be alarmed if yours doesn't. Also, it's really important to burp your coolant system properly, because if there's any air pockets, it can result in an overheating scenario. So when you're doing your road test, just make sure to monitor your temperature. My temperature is behaving completely normal. It's just a hair under the halfway point and it has not uh, moved from there. So anyways, I hope you liked my video on how to replace your coolant sensor, which is not fun, as well as your thermostat. So if you did like this video, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Maybe I'll see you out on the trail sometime.